Good morning and welcome to worship here on this beautiful Sunday morning and Mother's Day. Uh, we welcome and uh, we celebrate um, all the mothers in our lives, those who uh, bore us and those who helped raise us and those who inspired us throughout our lives. All of them, all of the women in our lives who have done those things are really mothers and uh, we want to celebrate all of that work. And uh, so we're happy that you are here with us this morning and a part of worship. Um, we have just a few announcements. The first is that uh, we are um, trying to begin to track um, attendance. And so we have this um, QR code. These are the square codes you see on the screen. Um, and uh, that all that does actually is send your phone to a website. Uh, but it does an extra trick of adding the date in. So even if, you were watch if you're watching this on Sunday morning, you can click on that uh, code that's on the screen now and it'll send you to our form. It'll fill in the date. Um, also, if you are watching this um, in, on YouTube or on our website uh, later in the week, that same QR code will show up there and we'll also give attendance for this date. So whenever you watch this morning's worship, you can, you can check in with us and let us know that you're watching it. Feel free to add all the names of the people in the room who are watching it with you on one form. You don't have to do an individual form for each person, um, and we'll figure it all out. We don't have that many people that we can't keep track of that. So, um, but that's something new we're doing. Um, the reality is, is that once we are back together and worshiping, uh, we will probably continue to use this QR code. It'll just be available on the bulletin or on a poster near the door. So as you come into church, and prepare for worship. You can just use your phone and use the QR code, go to the website and check yourself in. We'll be doing lots of things differently once we gather together, whenever that is. And um, so as we get closer, we'll talk more about all the things that will be different um, when we get to that point. I believe, are there any other announcements? Nope, I think that is it. So um, we want to welcome you all to worship with us. And uh, please join with us in these opening gathering songs. Yeah. 
go with me in our call to worship. We've gathered to worship God. Who loved us from our very beginning. Who knows us even better than we know ourselves. Whose presence never leaves us. And whose love for us never ceases. This, this is our God. God. Let, Let us worship, worship together. together. Gracious and loving God, we know that the most important gifts in our lives can't be counted in QuickBooks or traded on the stock exchange. The most important gifts are your love and grace. We come here today to celebrate the moments we have received your gifts of love and grace in our times of need. In addition, we celebrate the moments we have shared your gifts of love and grace with others in their time of need. Like the nurture of a loving mother, we strive to be a guide and inspiration to those around us. In the example of your Son, Jesus Christ, may we strive to share your love and grace in all we do. Amen.
Our scripture reading this morning comes from Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 24. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Do you support the church with your gifts? We need more. Oh, wait a minute. That's. Sorry, wrong sermon. <laughs> we talk about. Um, and when we take our membership vows, we talk about these things. We talk about supporting the church um, with our prayers and our presence, as, as we have spoken the, the last couple of weeks about, and our gifts. And I have to admit to you that often when I have read that, I think of money, right? And am I supporting the church with my gifts? My gifts I give in the offering every week, right? And my gifts that I give uh, to the church for special occasions, for flood recovery, for whatever happens to be going on. But that isn't the very tip of what we mean when we say, do you support the church with your gifts? It is not about how much money you are giving to the church. It is about whether you use your gifts to support the church. That can be financial, but it can also be a, min, a million other things as well. So that begs the question, what kind of gifts do you have? Do you have any gifts? You know, some people think they are everything, right? They are God's gift to the universe and to the world. They think they have a gift for everything. We meet a lot of them on Facebook. They think they know everything and they have all the information, right? But we also know that there are many people who think they don't have any gifts. Many people who think they have no way of helping others or the church or of doing anything uh, of value for God. And I fear that there are a lot more people who fit in that category. People who go through their lives thinking that they have no gifts, that they don't know enough about anything to be helpful, that they have no value to the world around them. And to you and to those who feel that way, I want to remind you that we are all God's children. That God created each and every one of us. And as so many have said so eloquently, God doesn't make junk. God makes wonderfully blessed things. We are all of us wonderfully and wholefully made. We all have gifts that we can share. And Jesus told these three stories, and, and if you think about it, these three stories kind of go together, but kind of are not really, they're kind of different, because the first story is about storing up treasures. But I know that in the United States, um, 
There's a lot more debt to credit cards than there are savings and savings accounts. I'm not sure that our problem is really storing up treasures here on earth for most of us. Although one could argue that creating credit card debt is a way of storing up treasures. We're buying things that are filling our houses. And we have talked before that one of the fastest growing industries in the, in the United States is self-storage. We buy so much stuff that we can't even fit it in our homes, in our garages, in our backyards, that we have to now buy storage somewhere else, pay a monthly fee just to keep our stuff. So maybe, maybe Jesus had a point. Maybe we are storing up our treasures here on earth. And then he talks about the eye, the eye and how it lets in light into our bodies. I don't know, we'll have to get back to that one. That was fascinating. Um, and then he talks about serving two masters. And this we've heard more than once because it is multiple times throughout the Gospels that Jesus comes back to this saying that you cannot serve two masters. So how do these all relate? How do these all connect to one another? Well, the treasure I want to talk about today are our gifts. The treasure that God has given us are the, are the gifts that God has given us. And my question for you today is, what are we doing with those gifts? How are you using the gifts that God has given you? Maybe God has given you the gift of being an extrovert. And I apologize to you, this is a really hard time for you, isn't it? <laughs> being locked away in your home week after week after week. And perhaps you're an introvert, and you're loving this time. Finally, no, you don't have to give any excuses for not going to all those parties. Both of those are gifts. But how are you using those gifts? Are you using those gifts to simply bring yourself pleasure and comfort and treasures, things to fill your house? Or are you using the gifts that God has given you to share God's love and grace? Are you using those gifts to worship God, to celebrate God, and to share God with this world? Or are you using those gifts simply for your own personal investment? You see, this is what Jesus is really talking about here. Right? Because he's not talking about us. Instead of putting the money in the bank, we need to send the money to heaven. I mean, that's what it says literally, right? We should store up our treasures in heaven. But I, I don't know how to do a deposit like that. I can do a deposit of money to the bank, or I can give it to the church, or I can hand it out, or I can buy things. But I'm not sure how to send a check directly to God. So God, so Jesus here is talking about the other treasures to store up in heaven, and he's talking about the treasures of love. How are we using our gifts? To love only ourselves and to those around us, or to love everyone? Are we using those gifts to support and love and nurture just a few people in an isolated cell? Or are we using those gifts to share God's love with everyone, with our community, with our country, with the world? Are we storing those treasures up here inside of us? Or are we sharing our love and sharing God's love with the world and therefore storing up our treasures in heaven? You see, that's what this story is really about. Because then we move on to this second story. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, the whole, your whole body will be full of light. Right? How healthy are your eyes? Mine aren't too bad. I can take off my glasses and still see the camera. I know others who couldn't. 
that if they took off their glasses, they wouldn't be able to see more than a few feet in front of them. I'm not sure which applies to you. But that's not what Jesus is talking about here either, right? He's not talking about our physical eyes. Our physical eyes don't actually let light into our full bodies. They just let them into the back, into the cornea, right? What he's talking about is with our eyes, what do we see? What are we looking for? As you go through your busy days, and I know that even though we're, we're locked away in our isolation in our homes, we still find a way to make our days busy and full of things, right? But what are you looking for with your eyes? Are you looking for ways and opportunities to share God's love? Or are you just looking for ways to simply cope with life day after day? Are you looking for ways to share God's love in real and practical ways? Or are you simply caught up in the busyness of life? If our eyes are looking for ways to show and to shine and to reflect God's light, then our whole bodies, our whole lives, our whole souls will be filled with that light. And we will find those opportunities. We will see them. They will be so obvious to us if we only look and are dedicated in that endeavor to look, to find ways, to share our gifts, and to share God's love and grace. That's what he means by this story. Is what are we choosing to do? What are we choosing to see? Are we looking for the light? Or are we caught up and buried in the darkness? And how can we help others to see the light? By being an example, right? By being an example to others. We can't convince others. We can't command others. But we can be an example. And as we look for the light in our lives, even in the midst of trials and even in the midst of un discomfort and in the midst of things going wrong, if we are looking for the light, we will see it in the midst of darkness. But if we're not looking for the light, if our eyes are focused entirely on the darkness, how dark is that darkness indeed, Jesus said. And then he goes on to say that we cannot serve two masters, right? This story that we've heard over and over again. You have a choice about how you use your gifts. We each have a choice, and we make that choice again and again, over and over, each and every day. So I'm asking you to take some time today to reflect and to think about how you are using your gifts. Are you using them simply to perpetuate your ongoing struggle and just get caught up in the busyness of your schedule and your life? Are you caught up in pessimism and doubt? Or are you truly looking for opportunity? Are you truly looking and expecting to see God's grace and love in the world around you? It's a choice that we have to make. A choice that I said we make again and again, each and every day. So I'm challenging you today to make a choice to not get caught up in the worries and anxieties of the world around us. They will be with us. They're not going anywhere. But instead, in the midst of them, in the midst of anxiety and worry, look for opportunity. Expect them to be there. Expect to see God's love and grace and opportunities to share that love and grace in the world around you. They will be there. But you have to make the choice. You can't serve both. 
You can't be focused on the pessimism and the anxiety and the worry and at the same time see God's love around you. You have to make the choice to look for it, to expect it. All three of these stories are about choices. The choices we make and how we use our gifts. God has given us so much, most of which we take for granted. But when we choose to use our gifts, when we choose to store our treasures in heaven, to focus our gifts on God rather than on the here and now, when we look for opportunities to share God's love and expect to find them, and when we make the choice to serve God, then truly we are the church with our gifts. Amen? Our song that we're going to sing now is, a, is new to me, and I think new to Deborah, and, and maybe new to you. So if you don't know it, feel free to enjoy and just listen. Very pretty song, is it not? We've come now to a time of sharing our joys and concerns. Well, let us lift all of these joys and concerns to God as we join together in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for being present with us even as we are absent from one another. 
We thank you for guiding us and helping us through each day. Giving us opportunity upon opportunity to share our gifts and to share your light and your love to a world that so desperately needs your light and love. We ask you to especially be present this morning with those whom we lifted up. With those who continue in the battle as, as we feel a, a lightening of heart, as things slowly begin to open around us, we know that there are so many in this world who are still suffering doctors and nurses who are still working long hours, tire, tirelessly trying to, to bring healing to those who are so sick. We ask for you to be present with them, to wrap those who are in need of your love and care in your arms of love and care that they may feel your warmth and your comfort. We ask you to bring healing to those who so desperately need it, both physical healing and spiritual healing. And we ask you to give us strength and focus that we may choose you that we may choose to store our treasures with you, that we may choose to focus our attention on sharing your love, and that we may choose to serve you and only you each and every day. Help us to remember that this is our calling as we remember the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We have come now to our time of sharing our gifts, right? <laughs> Only this time we are kind of talking about our finances. Um, so... I wanted to once again lift up to you. We've been doing this enough weeks that you all should know already. And I thank you for all of those who have taken that opportunity to do so, to go to our website at ramonaumc.org slash give and to help to support our church and its ministries. Um, we are still working on a PPP loan and um, hoping to get that support primarily for our preschool. Our preschool is, is is working very hard, but with a, such a limited amount of enrollment, they are, they are stretched to the max. And so we are hoping to get that loan and to help us tide this time of, of being there and helping to support as many of the teacher and staff that we can. But we welcome and thank you for your gifts. Please join with us now in the singing of our doctor. Loving God, we know we do not always share well. Too often we live in the fear of scarcity rather than the trust of generosity. Give us wisdom to see what is truly of value in our lives and help us to acknowledge and appreciate the times we have received the treasures of heaven. 
In turn, give us a spirit of generosity to share these gifts with all who are in need. Amen. Please join us in our closing hymn, Take My Love. As you go forward this week, I invite you to um, have in mind on Wednesday when you join with me in our midweek connection, how you are storing your treasures in heaven and the choices that you are making and how your choices might change this week when you think about truly focusing on making those choices. Until then, may God's light shine on the path before you. May Jesus walk beside you as a guide and friend. And may the power of the Holy Spirit work within you to give you strength, courage, and hope to go forth each and every day. Amen. Have a great week. Amen.